Okay, so today we're going to talk about Laurent series. So, what do we know about singularity? So, if F has a pole at Z0, then that exactly means we define it to be this, that f of z has zero at z zero, i.e. if it has a zero at z zero, one over f of z is equal to z minus z zero to some n and then some holomorphic function g, where g of z zero is not equal to zero. And then we unwrap that and then we get so f of z is equal to z minus z0 to the minus n, g of z to the minus 1. And then since g is a nice holomorphic function, which is non-zero, we can just expand it. And then we find out that it has some expansion like this, k equals 1 up to n a to the minus k z minus z0 to the minus k, and then some function, let's say, h, which is holomorphic. Right? And so this h thing, which is holomorphic, we can do a Taylor expansion of it. So what we have is, 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 is implicitly some kind of more general expansion than a Taylor and a Taylor series, because we are expanding to the negative powers of z minus z0, right? And um, that's a very useful thing. We've used that lots of times. It turns out, however, that we can actually expand even when we don't have a pole. We can expand and we'll have a, a series which will have a negative powers or sum of negative powers. And we'll have that holding true inside some annulus where we can fit the annulus uh, inside the domain where it's holomorphic. And that is called Laurent series. Okay, so more generally. We can do this. We can expand into negative powers negative even when we don't have a pole. And how does this work? Well, this is our theorem. So suppose we have that uh, F is holomorphic. on omega and we have that so I'll define this in a second we have that annulus say uh, 0 uh, 1 is contained within omega then we have that f of z is equal to the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity of a k z minus z zero to the k where uh, these a k uh, one over two pi i uh, c is going to be any closed curve inside this annulus c and we're going to have uh, f of zeta zeta minus z zero to the 
k plus 1 v zeta. Okay, so what's the picture? The picture is that we can have a holomorphic function and there can be some holes inside our domain like this, right? Or they could just have some singularities inside, right? And if we fit some annulus inside our domain like this, right? Then we can have a power series expansion holding true inside this annulus, you know, given by these coefficients. Uh, so, for example, if we did it around the singularity, then we could just have whatever punctured ball we could fit inside the domain, right? And then this thing still holds true. And if you think about that case, if the singularity is just a pole, then 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 we already know this because this is what this has already given us, right? Yeah. So the real purpose of this, the real use of this, is actually, well, the real purpose, well, what uh, the new thing that this thing will, will actually give us is, is the ability to do a, an expansion around an isolated singularity, which is not a pole, i.e. is actually an essential singularity. Yeah? And if it's an essential singularity, then, then that is equivalent to the expansion of the negative powers of z minus z zero being infinite. So when we have the expansion of the negative powers being finite, then it's just a pole, right? And it's easy to see that's necessary and sufficient, right? Uh, however, we do have situations where there's an essential singularity, right? And we might want to expand around that with inside some annulus, and we can actually do this. So this is essentially the new thing that this gives us, that we have the ability to do an expansion around an essential singularity. Because if it's removal singularity, then it's just a Taylor series. If it's a pole, then it's this thing, which is quite easy, right? So this theorem is this main new thing is just for that context. However, it's kind of neat that we can do this nevertheless. We can actually expand around an essential singularity and have a non-trivial new expansion that holds true inside whatever annulus we can fit inside our domain. Okay, that's what Laurel series is about. Cool. All right. Let me erase the board. Are you all clear on the statement and everything I've said so far? Yeah? Everybody happy? Give me a thumbs up if you are. Okay, cool. Okay, so how do we prove this? All right, so uh, A of Z0, R0, R1 is this thing. It's just a ball of radius R1 at Z0. Take away the closed ball of radius R0 around Z0, right? So it's this thing like this. This is R0, and this thing here is R1. Okay just as you'd expect, okay? So we're assuming that this thing is contained is contained within our region omega, okay? And we're going to take two circles which are close to the, either the inside or the outside. So let's take a circle C1 which is close to the, let me change color to red. Let's take a circle C1, which is close to this outer boundary, like this. And obviously we're gonna make it arbitrary close. And then let's take a circle C0, which is very close to the inner boundary, like this. Okay, so take circles C0 and C1 has shown, and suppose Z is inside. C1 and outside 
C0. Okay, so we pick some arbitrary Z, whatever, here. And this thing is Z0 here at the center. Then the first claim. that we actually have that f of z is 1 over 2 pi i, the integral around the larger circle, f of zeta, zeta minus z0, d zeta, minus 1 over 2 pi i, the integral around the inner circle. All right, tell me why we claim that. Why is that true? Look at this picture here. Why is that true? Okay, so if I did that, if I made a, a corridor like this, what, how does that help me? Agreed, but why is it the case that, 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 that the integral of the outer circle minus the integral of the inner circle is equal to f of z? Let me put the uh, write some stuff down. So let's call this thing camera of delta, right? So we know that the limit as delta goes to zero of camera of the integral of camera of delta of this thing. is exactly equal to what you say, the outer circle minus the inner circle. Yeah. So, why would this thing be equal to f of z? Cauchy integral formula, right? So long as, so long as the, this gamma delta and its interior is inside what I previously said was a delta good domain, but now we just need to know that it's inside a, uh, inside our simply connected domain. And of course it is because it is simply connected itself being the interior of a closed curve. So. So yes, this thing is something we can apply Cauchy's integral formula to. So, and by Cauchy's integral formula, we have that f of z equals one over two pi i, the integral of this thing for any choice of delta of f of zeta, z, uh, 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 zeta minus z, d zeta like this. And that just follows because if we just take a ball around zeta, then that's the thing that we proved for, right? For a very small ball. And then we can just deform this curve onto the ball with this kind of contour integral with the, with the, uh, with the corridor stuff. That stuff we've done lots of times, right? Yeah, cool. So we can do that. We can break this up into <clears throat> this integral around the outer circle minus the integral around the inner circle. Okay, now let's look at the integral around the outer circle. So notice that when we look at the integral around the outer circle, Uh, 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 zeta minus z. The zeta, then we can do this trick. We can go, okay, this is of zeta, and then let's do zeta minus z0, and then let's write z0 minus z, like this, right? And zeta, when it's on the outer circle here, let's change color, 
when zeta is on the outer circle, then this quantity zeta minus z0 has this radius here, which is like almost like r1. It's just a bit smaller than r1, right? Whereas z minus z0, right, is something much smaller. Yeah, as you can see from this picture. Yeah, so we can factor out this zeta minus z0 from the bottom line here, and then we get this, f of zeta, zeta minus z0, and then we're going to have 1 plus z0 minus z over zeta minus z0 like this. Right? And let's write this as minus minus which we can do, right? So if I, if, I, if I swap the z0 and the z, then I can write this as minus this thing minus z0, like this. Yeah? Yeah? Cool. And then what is this thing? Well, for every choice of zeta, this thing is a complex number strictly smaller than 1, right? This thing here is a complex number strictly smaller than one, just by what I just said, that this distance is a lot smaller than zeta minus z0, no matter what zeta we have on this outer circle. Yeah? Cool. All right, and then we do this Taylor expansion. This is exactly how we proved, so again, then we do this geometric series expansion. This is exactly how we proved the Taylor series before. All right, so then this is equal to C1, F of zeta, zeta minus z0, and then we have the sum from k equals 0 to infinity, z minus z0, oops, over zeta minus z0 to the power k, the zeta, yeah? Cool. And what we'd like to do is to sum, is to swap the sum and the integral, right? And that's what we did quite carefully when we did this proof, right? Yeah. But it turns out we can do this because this series will converge uniformly. Uh, start that again. The partial sums of this series will converge uniformly to the series for any zeta around the outer circle because it's dominated by this geometric series given by the absolute value of this expression here. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we did before. So look back on your notes for how we argued this. Uh, recall we can swap limits and integrals whenever we have uniform convergence, and the partial sums of this expression converge uniformly to its limit for any zeta, for any zeta on the uh, on the ball. Right? And we can give an explicit error bound of how far away the nth partial sum is to the actual series. Is this is this is this do you have some memory of this? Is this coming back a little bit? Yeah, cool. So if we swap the sum and the integral, what do we get? We get the sum from k equals zero to infinity, and we are going to have uh, uh, z minus z zero to the k integral around this closed ball like this, and then we're going to have f of zeta over zeta minus z0 to the k plus 1, the zeta, right? Yeah. And then we divide everything by 1 over 2 pi i, because it's inside this thing, right? And then we'll have these coefficients divided by 1 over 2 pi i, and that's exactly the Taylor coefficients that we know, right? Yeah. And we also know that this is equal to the um, to the nth uh, to the kth derivative of f at z zero divided by k factorial. Right? That's exactly how we prove Taylor series. Yeah. So the contribution from the outer circle gives us the Taylor series part. Right. So this part right here is equal to uh, 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 the kth derivative at z0. Uh, uh, when you 
divided by one two pi times two over k plus one factorial over k factorial times two pi i, right? Because we haven't divided through by the two pi i yet. No? So that's exactly what we expect and what we want. So this is giving us the Taylor part of the expansion. expansion. Cool. So now we're going to think about this other term, this minus 1 over 2 pi i around the smaller circle. Okay. And as you can expect, that's going to give us the negative indices. And that's what we're going to see. Okay. So let's draw the picture. Again, so we have our annulus, not a very good annulus, and we have our two balls, our two circles. And this one was the larger one, the C1. And this was the smaller one, the C0. Yeah. And we had some z inside here. Cool. So we had our representation that f of z was 1 over 2 pi i, the integral around the larger circle, uh, f of zeta, zeta minus z, d zeta minus the integral around the smaller circle, f of zeta, zeta minus z, the zeta, which just followed from Cauchy's integral formula and doing this corridor going down to zero and stuff. And now we're interested in this expression right here. Because we know that the other one just produced the Taylor series, right? So if we look at this expression right here, so consider the integral around this smaller ball f of zeta, zeta minus z, d zeta. Again, we're going to break this up using z0, so c0. Uh, let's put a minus sign here. Let's put a minus, because this minus sign is here. And what do we have? Let's write zeta minus z0 plus z0 minus z, like this. Yeah, and now let's think carefully about about the size of these relative terms because we are here, right? Zeta is here. This is z zero here in the center, right? So this distance here is very close to r zero, and it's definitely less than this thing. Then oh, this is so messy. Let me do that again. So this is the central point here. This is z zero. Right? So this distance here is definitely bigger than z0 minus zeta for any zeta going round. Yeah? As you can just see. Yeah? Because look, this distance here is definitely bigger than this distance here. Because this thing is outside of the circle of radius, whatever the radius of the... Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Let me, let me get a bigger picture on the board then. Okay, let's do a bigger picture. So, this is the outer circle. This is the inner circle. Yeah? This thing is Z0 right here. Yeah? Z is somewhere between these two circles. Yeah? And zeta lives here, entering around the inner circle. Right? So, this is circle C0, and this is circle C1. Yeah? And then zeta is here. Yeah? So the, the absolute value of z0 minus zeta is always the radius of the inner circle. Whereas the absolute value of z minus z0 is something definitely bigger. Yeah? Cool. So, notice that this time we have the mod z minus z0 is definitely bigger than 
It's at zero. Zeta minus at zero. Oops. And this is the important point for any zeta on the circle, because we need it for any zeta, because we're going to ultimately pass the limit through the sums. Uh, say that again, we're going to take the sum through the integrals, we're going to pass the limit through the integrals, and we need this geometric series we're going to get to actually converge, right? Absolutely, so you'll control the error. So this is true for any zeta inside this circle, C0. Yeah? Cool. So from this expression right here, from star, we want to rewrite this, and we're going to ultimately use a geometric series, right? But we're going to have to put this in the form of one plus or minus something where that something has got absolute value less than one, yeah? yeah? And this time we're going to make the smart choice using this inequality, right? So we need this thing to be the thing which is on top, and we divide through by this thing in order to have something strictly less than one, yeah? So that means we're going to factor out this thing this time, yeah? So this thing is equal to minus this thing, and let's factor out this z minus z0, and then we're going to have 1, messy 1, do it again, and have 1. So we factor out z minus z0, this is 1, and then this thing is going to be zeta minus z0 over uh, sorry, this is z0 minus z, right? That is what I factored out from here. So this will be zeta minus z0 over z0 minus z, like this. Yeah? The zeta. So all I've done is factor out this z0 minus z from this. So this thing becomes 1, and this thing becomes zeta minus z0 over z0 minus z, like this. Yeah? With me, people? Cool. All right. So this thing is strictly less than one. So again, we expand it as a geometric series. Ah, but before we do this, we want to make it neater because we want uh, we want to flip this around so to make it a minus sign, and let's also flip this thing around so that we have uh, z minus z zero. So let's do that first before we uh, do the expansion. So it's, oops, and I should say we're entering around zero. So then we're going to have f of zeta, and on the bottom we are going to have z minus z zero, flipping this around and getting rid of the minus sign. So this minus sign goes to flipping this thing around, and then this thing we have one minus. And let's have oops. zeta minus z0 over flipping now this thing around z minus z0, like this. Yeah? Like this. And this thing is integrated with respect to zeta. <laughs> yeah? Cool. And now we can do the geometric series expansion. So this is the integral 0, f of zeta, z minus z0. And what is this thing going to be? It's going to be the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of zeta minus z0, z minus z0 to the power k, like this, d zeta, right? And let's put all that stuff all together. So what are we going to have? We are going to have integral this thing. Let's pull out the powers of z minus z0. So we're going to have z minus z0 to the power of minus k minus 1, right? From this thing and from this thing. Yeah? And then we have f of zeta, and then it's going to be zeta minus z0 to the k like this, right? Let's get rid of this one. And then this thing is with, integrated with respect to z. Oh, I forgot the summation signs. Yeah. So let's do that again, this thing. And then we have the sum from k equals 0 to infinity, and then this whole expression like this. Yeah? 
Cool. All right. Now, the point is that this sum of terms, again, is uniformly going to converge. Let's start that again. The partial sum of this stuff is uniformly going to converge to its limit. Because, again, this is a geometric series where the absolute value of the terms is strictly less than 1 for any zeta inside this thing. Right? So exactly the same argument which we use to prove the existence of a, of, a, of a Taylor series allows us to swap the partial sum, start again, allows us to swap the sum with the integral because the partial sum tends uniformly to the actual sum. So it's an identical argument, um, just using the fact that if we take the tail end of this, say the sum from k is equal to m to infinity, and the absolute value of this expression right here, we can show it is less than than some number less than one to the power m over over one minus whatever. Yeah, does that does that seem familiar? Yeah. So that means that that we have the right to swap the summation and the integral. And when we do this, then we pull out this entire thing, which is not being integrated, right? So then we have that we have the sum from k equals zero to infinity of z minus z0 to the minus k minus 1. And then this integral like this, the integral around c0 of f of zeta, zeta minus z0 to the k, d zeta. Yeah? Cool. All right, let's change the summation. Now let's start with k equals 1. Because if we start with k equals one, then then this thing now becomes uh, this thing now becomes uh, 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 k, and this thing now becomes k minus one. Yeah. So right now we're starting with zero. So okay, let me write this like this. This is minus k plus one, like this. Yeah. So if instead of starting with k equals zero, so the first term here is one, we start with k equals one, yeah? then this guy here would have to be k minus one, because for the first time we're going to get zero, and this thing would be k. Yeah? So I claim that this is the same as the sum from k equals one to infinity of z minus z zero to the minus k, and then this integral like this. to the k minus 1, just like this. Cool. And now let's not take the sum from k equals 1 to infinity. Let's take the sum from minus 1 to minus infinity. OK? So then this is now, so if I was being really formal, I would change from k to something else to something else. But I'm going to run out of letters, and I, I don't want to do it. So I'm just going to call it k all the time. So k to minus 1 to minus infinity. And then this term now becomes z minus z0 to the k, and then this thing, this k is going to be replaced by minus k, right? Oops. So we're going to have minus k minus 1 d zeta. Yeah? Cool. I'm going to get rid of this picture and then put details in here. OK, so. Putting details inside here, so let's call this thing star. Uh, what is this thing? Well, this thing is actually exactly what we want, right? So this expression is exactly the same expression we claimed we had before, right? So uh, well, uh, uh, well, I mean, I, there's, there's no, there's, uh, okay, okay, there's no point in rewriting it because I'm just going to write exactly the same thing. Let me instead uh, go from here. So recall that we are supposed to divide by one over two pi i, everything, right? So, so when we consider uh, minus one over two pi i of this little circle s zero of this thing. Yeah, then this expansion we have here means that this is the sum from k is equal to minus 1 to infinity of z minus z0 
to the k and then ak where ak is the same expression that we had before it's 1 over 2 pi i and now we're iterating over this circle c0 but as I'm about to point out we can iterate over any closed curve inside the uh, annulus but let's just write it like this for the time being f of zeta over zeta minus z0 to the uh, k plus k plus 1 like this and this is exactly the same expression we had for the Taylor series, right? And this is what we claimed was true for every, any coefficient from minus infinity to infinity. Yeah. And then the final thing to point out is that that even though this is around the circle C0, which was this inner circle, and all of this stuff is inside an annulus where we have things are analytic, uh, say holomorphic, so to use that word more, then we can, instead of integrating around C0, we can integrate around any closed curve inside the annulus and replace this expression by that expression because the same dust off the deformation of curves because we can do this corridor connecting the inner circle to whatever closed curve we want. And then inside this thing, we have something which is holomorphic on inside this closed, inside this closed curve and on its boundary and, and then, and then this, 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 there exists a primitive and then the whole thing is equal to zero. So we can deform this inner circle to any other curve. So this, these coefficients, you don't have to take the inner circle, the outer circle, any closed curve will give you this thing. Yeah? Cool. All right. So that's it. That's giving us. So this gives the claim. And this can be done, of course, on any annulus you fit inside your domain. And if you fit your annulus inside a domain where it's actually holomorphic inside the, 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 the ball, which is the outer side of the annulus, all that means is that all these, all these negative powers will just vanish. All these negative powers will just vanish, as you can see from this expression, because if f is holomorphic, uh, then since this is a negative power, if you have a negative power here, then, then this thing will just be zero, just because it's an analytic function in a closed ball, right? Yeah. So um, this theorem holds true as stated, no matter what annulus you stick in inside your domain. But but if the annulus is such that in the inner circle of the annulus it's just holomorphic or has a removable singularity, then it just gives you back Taylor series. Yeah. Cool. All right. So. That is Laurent series, and now let's calculate some Laurent series. Let's do the following example. Well, before we do that, let me just state formally that the following thing. So, so notice that. If we do a raw series expansion around an isolated uh, singularity. Then uh, I, we write that f of z is equal to the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity a k z minus z zero to the k in the punctured ball like this. Then. Ouch. Uh, if z0 is not removable, then the cardinality of this ak where k is less than or equal to uh, minus 1 equals infinity if and only if 
uh, that zero is an essential. Uh, okay, let's do the logic the right way. So what do we know? So we know that, so proof. So let's do it one way. If Z0 is essential, then uh, we must have this cardinality is infinite. Because if not, and then this thing is finite and we have that there is some last negative index, then the last non-zero negative index would be the order of the pole and we'd have a pole. Yeah? If not, then... Uh, then... We have the sum f of z is equal to the sum from something, say, minus k equals minus m to infinity, a k z minus z zero to the k. And if a to the minus m is not equal to zero, pole of order m. Conversely, if we have that this cardinality is finite, then we can represent it like this, and therefore it is a pole. Wait, did I not just do the same thing? Okay, let's do that properly. Conversely, if we have that yeah, I just I just did the con. Yeah, okay. I just logically I just said exactly the same thing as that implication. So it's properly. Conversely, if this cardinal is infinite, then what we're trying to show is that it's an essential singularity, right? So. If uh, Z0 was not essential, then it would have to be a pole. And we already know from the fact that if it's a pole, that we have this thing, right? That f of z equals z minus z0 to the m, some holomorphic function h of z, okay? And therefore, as we've seen before, so we would have And a full expansion like this, h of z equals the sum k is equal to, oops, this is minus m, equals minus m to infinity, a k z minus z zero to the k like this, yeah? So this is the direction that we know already. That's, that's the stuff that we started the class with. And this implication, this direction, that if we, have an essential singularity, then this thing is infinite. This is because we've just proved Laurent expansion, right? And by Laurent expansion, we write it like this. And if this is finite, then it looks like this. And then this is just what we're looking at here as a pole. Yeah? So then this is an if and only if. Cool. All right. So this is so close to being kind of obvious that it's hard to prove it uh, without 
without not saying the same thing twice instead of going one direction and then back the other. Yeah. All right, so now let's do this thing. Example. Let's consider this thing, f of z is equal to 1 over z, z minus 1. And when we find the Laurent expansion, so from now on, Laurent expansion is L expansion, or M L series, in the following domains. So A, this domain, uh, just the punctured ball around 1, uh, around 0 of radius 1, B is uh, a set of Z such that mod Z is bigger than 1. C is the punctured, uh, let me just write it, it's the set of Z such that Z minus 1 is like this, and then D is uh, the set of z such that mod z minus 1 is bigger than 1. That is our question. And notice these are all these are all different annuli. So we have this function that has a singularity at 0 and has a singularity at 1, right? And this thing here, the ball of radius 1 around 0, is this annulus like this. That just avoids zero, right? And sure enough, this annulus fits inside uh, the domain omega where this thing is holomorphic. Yeah, so we can indeed apply this theorem, and there should be a Laurent expansion in this in this punctured ball, right? So this is this is A. Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you're with me here. Cool. All right, what's the domain B? B is everything outside the ball of radius one. Right? which is another annulus. It's an annulus which has got infinite radius on the other end. Right? Yeah. So that's A, and then B is everything outside. So I don't know how to really draw that well. So that's B is everything outside here, so that's B. Right? So maybe I should like point out A is the interior, not the circle itself. So this is A itself, yeah, but not this thing. This is a puncture ball. B is everything outside. Let's think about this thing. This is the annulus uh, of radii 0, 1 around 1, right? So what annulus is this? So it's got this inner radius of 0 around 1 and this outer radius of 1 like this. Yeah? That's what C is. So C is this thing right here. And sure enough, it's another annulus which is inside the domain on which F is holomorphic. So this, this is also true. This is another annulus inside our domain where we have a unique Laurent series. The Laurent series, as you saw from the proof, was completely defined by its coefficients, which are defined by whatever closed curve we integrate around these coefficient expressions on, right? Yeah, so it's entirely uniquely defined on whatever annulus we decide to do the expansion on. Yeah? And then the final domain, D, is everything of radius bigger than 1 uh, centered on 1. So that's everything outside here. You get another color. So D is everything outside here. And again, it's an annulus where the thing is holomorphic. Right? So we have these four different annuli here. We're going to calculate the Laurent series of the same expression of the same function. Yeah? Cool. Yeah? So we should expect to have four different Laurent series a, a priori, right? Yeah, it's the same function, but since the expansion holds true in four different domains, we expect different coefficients in each case. Yeah? Could be some fluke and we don't get different coefficients, I guess, but generally we would expect different coefficients. Okay, so. What's our function? Our function is f of z is equal to 1 over z, z minus 1, right? And let's do our first domain, a, which was the punctured ball of radius 1 around 0. Yeah? So, 
Look at this thing here. So obviously we're not going to just start to compute the coefficients of the Laurent series. That'll be a lot of work. We don't want to do it. We want to come up with the series, right, somehow, because once we come up with the series, then, then that has to be the series because the series is unique in this annulus. So A in this thing. Okay, so if we're expanding in this thing here, yeah, what do you see happening? How can we come up with a series in this in this punctured ball? So recall, I mean, once again, um, any series you come up with which is valid inside this punctured ball is the right series by uniqueness. So you have the right to do anything you want, so long as you come up with a series which holds true inside the punctured ball. So typically, if if you if you saw this in calculus, what would you be looking for? All right, we'd look right. Yeah, typically in in calculus, if you're asked to come up with some Taylor series uh, without coming up with the coefficients, you're going to use some trick, which involves using geometric series, right? Yeah, either some algebra to turn it into something like one over one minus whatever, right? Or you're going to differentiate it to turn it into something which, after algebra, goes into one over one minus, or integrate it to turn it into something which, after algebra, is one over one minus whatever. So we're going to use the same thing here, right? So we're going to write this like this, and then like this. Yeah. And then we're going to write this as minus 1 over z, 1 over 1 minus z. Yeah? And now we're happy because we see what this is, right? This is a this geometric series like this. And that's cool because now this is the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of minus z to the k minus 1. Right? And then we can instead take this sum from k equals minus 1 to infinity minus z to the uh, uh, k, like this. And then this is exactly the Laurent expansion, right? Yeah. So the first term is minus 1 over z. The next term is minus 1. The next term is minus z. The next term is z minus z squared and then minus z to the 3 and so on. Yeah. And this converges for any z inside this punctured ball. So it makes sense and converges inside this punctured ball, and, and that's it. So it has to be the Laurent series. And the first non-zero term is this 1 over z, which makes sense because you look at this and you see that you have a pole of uh, of order one at zero, so that's that should be the first non-zero term. Yeah, cool. So, so by uniqueness, uh, uniqueness, this is the L series. All right, cool. Let's do B. So B was everything outside the ball of radius, outside the of, uh, ball of radius 1 around 0. So we can write this as uh, 0, 1, infinity. And write this as a sentence. So inside for Z in a of 0, 1, infinity, i.e. everything outside the ball of radius uh, 1, uh, strictly inside, so everything outside the closed ball of radius 1 around 0. So here we're going to, again, apply some trickery, right? Because we don't want to actually calculate coefficients. Yeah? Okay, but if we apply some trickery, then that means we're going to have to expand something using geometric series, yeah? Uh, but now we can't, we can't expand it in terms of z because mod z is bigger than 1, right? Yeah, so what would we expect to expand things in terms of given that we have to make it converge here? 1 over z, right? 1 over z, because if we have 1 over z, then 1 over z is absolute value less than 1. So we have the hope that the geometric series will converge for 1 over c. Yeah? So need the geometric series 
to converge. So has to be the, the geo series. And one over Z. Yeah. Cool. So we somehow have to come up with some algebra to turn this into something like one over one minus Z. Yeah. But that's not hard to do, right? Because f of z equals 1 over z, z minus 1, and let's write that as 1 over z squared, 1 minus 1 over z. Cool. Yep. And then we write this as 1 over z squared, and then 1 over 1 minus 1 over z. And this thing is indeed something we now can expand with the geometric series, so then it's the sum from k equals 0 infinity of 1 over z to the k, which is the sum from, oops, which is 1 over this thing, the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of z to the minus k, like this, and then this is the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of z to the minus k. So yeah, we are starting therefore at minus 2. We are starting at minus 2. There we go. So then the first term is z to the minus 2 plus z to the minus 3 and so on like this. C, which was the punctured ball of radius 1 around 1, right? So inside, oops, Okay, so what uh, are we going to be expanding? Uh, so again, we're going to have to try and get the geometric series in action again, right? What what well, what are we going to expand inside the geometric series? Given that this is what we have. C minus 1, indeed. Because Z minus 1 is the only thing in, 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 in play which is going to have absolute value less than 1, right? Yeah? And of course, we're always expanding around the singularity. So it has to be Z minus 1. Yeah? It has to be Z minus 1. So we have to do some algebra to turn this into this thing. into this thing. f of z is equal to this. And what is this? Let's write this like this. z minus 1, z plus 1, like this. And then z minus 1, like this, right? And then let's write this thing as 1 over z minus 1, and what do we have here? Let's write this guy as 1 minus minus this, this thing, right? So then this is 1 minus minus, uh, or, or we don't have to do it. Let, let's do it that way. z minus minus z minus 1, like this. Yeah? So then we have z minus 1, and then this thing is just the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of minus k, minus 1 to the k of z minus 1 to the k, and then this is the sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the k of z minus 1. Oops. to the k minus 1, 
and the first non-zero term is, I mean, the, the lowest, the, neg you know, the lowest negative index is minus one, which is what you expect because you're doing a pole at minus one. Cool. So this is the raw series. So the first term is z minus one to the minus one. When k equals one, we just have minus one. When k is, we have minus one. Yeah. When k is equal to 2, we have z minus 1. And when k equals 3, we have z minus 1 squared, and then so on, like this. Yeah? Cool. All right, final, final domain is everything whose absolute value, sorry again, is mod z minus 1, absolute value bigger than 1, right? So it's the annulus around minus 1, 1 infinity. So as I raise the board, think about how we're going to do this. Again, we're going to use geometric series somehow. What are we going to use as the thing we expand inside the geometric series? We have to use either z or 1 over z, z, z minus 1 or 1 over z minus 1, given that we have a Laurent series which has positive and negative powers. So we need one of those four things to be expandable inside our domain, right? And uh, in the domain, which is the annulus of centered around one, which goes one infinity, then this thing, oops, or oh, we need to use um, z minus 1 to the minus 1 as the geometric series. Because nothing else will converge, right? There's no other thing that has any chance to converge. So we have f of z, again, is 1 over z, z minus 1, like this. And we're going to write this as 1 over z minus 1 plus 1, and then 1 over z minus 1, like this, right? So this guy is I'm going to leave alone. So this is the guy we are interested in. So let's write it like this, z minus 1, and then 1 over, let's put it like this, 1 plus z minus 1. All right, what, 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 uh, what thing now would you like to do? What's your next algebraic move? Perfect, yep. So let's write that as z minus 1 squared, and then we're going to pull out a z minus 1 from this thing. So we're going to have 1 plus uh, 1 over z minus 1, like this. Yeah? And now we have something that we can actually expand with the power series. Yeah? Uh, have we got the signs correct? Yes, we do. So let's write this as 1 over z minus 1 squared, then 1 over 1 minus minus 1 over z minus 1, like this, yeah? like this. And then power series this thing. Minus 1 to the k, uh, 1 over z minus 1 to the power k, like this. And what do we get from this? We're going to get sum for k is equal to 0 to infinity. And um, this will be minus 1 to the k, c minus 1 to the uh, uh, minus k minus 2. So that's the same as the sum from minus infinity up to minus 2. Uh, I have to be careful with the powers, but I'm okay because it's power 2, so it's like this, minus 1 to the k of z minus 1 to the k like this. Yeah? Cool. Yeah. So that is the Laurent series expansion. So 
So we're going to have uh, Z minus one. Uh, uh, so it's minus two and then minus one, Z minus one to the power three, and then plus one of Z minus one to the power four, and so on and so on and so on. Yeah? Cool. All right, so that gives it, right? That gives us, so this is the L series. So we have that in each of these four different annuli where we can do a Laurel series expansion, we have different Laurel series coefficient, right? We have a different series depending on the annuli. Yeah? Cool. All right, that's it. That's it for Laurel series. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, we'll have some homework problems practicing this kind of thing. Uh, it's it's not that much different than than Taylor series. It's just an additional additional kind of observation, additional twist in the story, and uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty that we can do this. Uh, yeah, that's it for this topic. All right, so have a great day, and I will see you all uh, on Tuesday next week. All right, bye bye, people.